Hey, 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 listeners, welcome back to yet another episode of Cables, Coffee, and Curveballs. We are your hosts, Rich and George. We are back with a very special bonus episode. We're also in studio here with our uh, summer producer, Erwin. Uh, so go ahead. Do you, fellas? Hey, hey, hey. I would usually say hello to Sweet Lou, but I'm going to say hello to Erwin today on the other side of the glass. Uh, George, thanks for the intro. Uh, this is our uh, summer kickoff episode. Uh, and uh, George, I'll let, I'll let you hand it over to our special guest to introduce themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So for those of you that heard our last episode, we talked about how May is uh, Mental, Health ne- Me- Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, and to that, we have our very special guests on with us today, Brian and Jolena. Um, Brian, Jolena, as it is tradition on this show, I don't introduce anybody. I let our guests introduce themselves. So go ahead. Uh, you guys are up. I'm Jolena. Okay, hi, I'm, <laughs> and I'm Brian. Yeah, hi, I'm Jolena Halloran. Um, I actually went to Pace for undergraduate and for my MBA, and I met my husband at Pace also. He was my college sweetheart, Brian. And you work at Pace. Oh, and I work at Pace. Yes, I still work at Pace. I've been here, I don't know, 13, 14 years. 13 years. I heard Security. it's a great place to work. <laughs> Security's been trying to get her off campus for years. It just, she keeps coming back. Um, <laughs> my name is Brian Halloran. I live, we, we all, we live in Pleasantville as a family and uh, kind of grew up in Pleasantville. And I went to Pace a little bit by default because I was a screw up and I didn't go on time. And my mom worked there and I was able to go for Uh-oh. free. It was really good. And, um, I played for the now defunct ice hockey team and uh, my wife and I started a foundation called Break the Hold. And as you mentioned, it's Mental Health Awareness Month and there's a lot of things going on and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to come on and talk to you about it. Excellent. We're, we're really happy to have you both. And uh, I that's a fun tip. I did not know that you were college sweethearts. I actually met my wife here at Pace as well. So uh, f- funny. Uh, Funny how things uh, work out that way. T- here I am, twenty years later. They actually uh, met in my office. I actually met in. Oh. My <laughs> wife worked for George at Educational oh, Media okay. as a student worker, and that is how. Yeah, that's kind of how that all began. And so the rest is history. The rest is history. I'll leave it at that. But <laughs> uh, thank, thank you both for joining. We really appreciate it. Um, uh, Brian, you mentioned the the foundation. We that's that's really why we had you guys on here. We wanted to talk about the great work you guys are doing. Um, could, you, could you just give our listeners a, a little bit of background on the the BTH Foundation and, and what you're doing with that and what it's all about? Yeah, BTH uh, is a foundation started by the Halloran family in Pleasantville, and it's focused on youth mental wellness. Um, what does that mean, right? Uh, it's really about mental health in general, and we t- we concentrate on a subset of ten to twenty four year olds, and we raise awareness, we try to reduce the stigma. And most of all, what we do is we bring programming directly into the school system. And that programming is youth mental health instruction. And it's taught alongside youth physical health instruction in the health classes. So it's something that makes sense. And I feel like I'm such a genius for thinking about this or doing this, but I think it's really just implementing it. And I think the mental health trends have been bad for a long time. And I think it's a generational thing and it's going to be hard to to turn it. But I think one way to do it is prepare and educate the next generation so they have the firepower and the resources to help themselves better than the rest of us did who sat in a quiet box and never said anything about it. But I'll tell you one other thing about BTH. It was established five years ago after uh, we had a terrible loss in our family. My middle son, Brian, uh, had suffered from depression for many years, but we had felt that he was improving and getting better and, and all those wonderful things. He went away to the university of South Carolina and he passed away in the first semester, his second semester there, um, by his I was actually name. at, yeah, I was actually at work that day and I was talking to another professor about life and loss and, um, one of our colleagues had lost a child. And so we were, it was very strange. It was, um, January 23rd, and we were saying, we don't know what we would do if we ever lost our, our child. Um, and then who knew that seven hours later, I went home, that we would be getting a knock on our door um, with, and there was a police on the other side, letting us know that the South Carolina police contacted the Pleasantville police and one of her boys had passed away. So, yeah, you don't so want to get that. You don't want to get that policeman knocking on your door after hours. You know, it's not a great thing. But it's like one of those movies where a soldier, you go to a soldier's family's house, and somebody's telling them 
that their son has passed. Yeah. So we got that notification, and afterwards, you know, we loved our son dramatically, um, you know, wonderfully, unbelievably, sure. um, close family, two other boys, and uh, he was the middle boy. And out of frustration, anger, hurt, and everything, we just decided that we wanted to do something positive. So we created the foundation and we want to help other kids and we do help other kids and families. And we don't, we want to minimize the number of people have to go through this kind of situation. Yeah, that is, that is quite a story. And I, you know, I can't even imagine, um, you know, I have two boys, 10 and five, Rich has two girls. I, I, I cannot Im imagine what that must have been like or what you went through, you know, being that you've been through this, what do you think today is is the biggest challenge facing mental health and, and how can we raise the awareness? Because, you know, a lot of times folks um, obviously don't want to talk about it. Um, and since the pandemic, I've noticed that there is more people are more open about it, more there's more awareness, there's there's more folks that are willing to talk about it. Uh, you know, both Rich and I teach CIS 101. I had a lot of students that were going through it during the during COVID, um, you know, friends, family. I've I've witnessed it more and more. Uh, but what is what from your perspective? What is the biggest challenge, and how can we do a better job raising awareness on this very important topic? So I think it's yeah. I think there's two things, and uh, one is education, giving the students the resources and knowledge on how to deal with their emotions. And then the next thing, which Brian will talk about more, and that's what BTH does. We provide um, education uh, to students. And then the next thing is the stigma, like removing the stigma associated with uh, depression and anxiety, because then you're more apt to speak out and let somebody else know, whether it's a coach, another friend, let them know that you are struggling and it's okay and it's normal and that, you know, you can get over it. So those two. Um, so but Brian, you want to talk about the education? No, I got to go. No. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember. I was going to say, I can't remember what I was going to say now, but um, okay. So reported numbers, data, one in four people suffer from diagnosable mental health disorder, right? Diagnosable. That means it's negatively impacting their lives and they had to take action on it. So that's one in four. How many people, and there's statistics that say more than half the people, or maybe only a third of people that really have a mental health disorder go to seek help and they are diagnosed. So how can we extrapolate that data to see how many people really have a mental health disorder? But it's great, much greater than one in four, right? So let's say it's one in three. So we're sitting in a room right now with four, five people, whatever. Who's Who's got it? Me, <laughs> you know, I got it, but I mean, you know, I got some of it and, and everybody has it to a degree, right? Everybody has anxiety. Everybody has OCD. Everybody has depression. Everybody has whatever, but it's when it negatively affects your life, right? But what Julian said is the key there. We have, it's the stigma. And why I brought up the numbers is if one in three suffer, why should there be such a stigma about it, right? And why do we not talk about it? What, maybe because we just were never educated ourselves and our parents were in generations prior. So they had no knowledge to educate, to do, talk about it. Also, back generations ago, often they were living in a subsistence kind of way, working all day in a very kind of just to provide for their families and didn't have time to worry about social concerns and all this other stuff that nowadays we seem to have a little bit more time for. So the stigma is a really big thing. And I think it's just the health concerns. You know, if you look at a graph, Mental health disorders have gone up for decades, right? It's the number of suicides have tripled in the last 50 years. You know, it's, um, the, I could just come up with numbers, whatever you want to look at, but it's all bad, right? It's all going more and more. Why? Because with this intellectualized society, we have higher needs, we have social media, we have crap, a lot of crap, right? A lot of, a lot of pressures on us and higher levels pressures are not, not standard kind of just assistance, but I'd say stigma is the biggest thing. How to get care, how to ask for care, how to get resources for care, how to get insurance to cover your care. Those are all major problems. What we do on the education front is we bring instructors right into the health classroom in three districts in this county in Westchester, Pleasantville, Elmsford, and Scarsdale. And they teach alongside the health instructor and they tell them about 
emotional regulation, emotional wellness, and how they can help themselves. And they develop skills, resiliency skills, and they learn how to talk to each other, and they learn the verbiage about what could be maybe wrong with them. Because if you know the key to mental health is getting someone when they're young and when they first start having mental health issues, that's where you're going to find the most success and do have to do the least amount of work to get the success. So the key is finding them early. And we think that having education and the verbiage at this age allows them to seek help earlier, to tell somebody. That's it. I, I have a quick question that, yeah. you know, this is for me and I'm sure our listeners, there might be some folks too. Do we, it's not, it's not, a, I know it's not a disease. Is it, a, do we refer to it as a condition? Do we refer to it as a stigma? How would you refer to mental health when you talk to somebody about it? It is, a, it is like a disease. It's an illness. It's a mental health illness. If you had a heart attack, what would you do? You go to the doctor, right? And what's a heart attack? Right. Your blood flow just stops going to a certain area. Does that mean you're, you're not a good person or you're not a whole person? No. If you have a mental health disorder and you're in a trough in a bad area, you're having a brain attack. And when you're losing hormones and certain biological things to your brain and you're not getting a certain type of relief in certain levels of serotonin and other things, and you're predisposed to having this situation, it is like an illness or a disorder. So it's a mental health illness or disorder is either one of those is fine. Um, I often like to not refer to it as that. I often like to refer to it as mental health challenges. I, I you know that's the best just definition I've heard of it because where I come from, you know, the you know, again, times are different. You know, when we don't talk about these things, and it's you know, it's always touchy feely about bringing it up and so on and so forth. But that's that's the best definition I've ever heard. Yeah, and, and growing up, just to piggyback off what I, I don't think this was ever just like in my household. Um, I'm one of three boys, um, almost 40. And I, I probably didn't really almost understand 40? what, yeah, almost. <laughs> he likes to remind, he likes to remind me that. For George is slightly days. over 40. We like, we like to remind our viewers and listeners that George is over 40 and I'm okay. slightly <laughs> under 40. Uh, but no, but seriously, it's something that was never discussed in my house, um, at all. And I, again, this is because it's mental health awareness when they really, uh, quick tangent in the sense that I went through my own thing in uh, probably 2020, 2021. And, and George actually is George, one of my, my best friends, and he helped me through what? some of the stuff that I went through, honestly. So nice. um, I saw I see things from a different perspective now after going through what I went through. Um, I also, as George mentioned, I have two two young ones, I have uh, almost eight year old and almost four year old and the the almost eight year old. Um, She's starting to, you know, again, at, at, at that age, she's already, sh I'm seeing things differently. Uh, you see things differently as a parent, obviously, but I also see things through the lens of, of the mental health perspective now because of what I have gone through. And, and I'm noticing things at her young age already that, you know, again, I, I, are they worrisome? Maybe, maybe not. Um, mm -hmm. But you mentioned your target audience of, I think you said 10 to 24. So uh, you mentioned three school districts. I, I, I love I just wanted to talk to you more about the, you know, I, you have the parent workshops, the training programs, and are you looking to get into more schools? Because I would, my parent, my kids go to Austin schools. I would love to be able to connect mm -hmm. you with somebody there and, and continue to help you expand that. Just not from, not even just because my kids go there, but just because it sounds like this is something that should be in every school district from, from starting at a young age to, to help them. Yeah. Yes, uh, definitely. If we just back up a bit in July of 2018, New York State uh, Department of Education mandated that mental health instruction be part of the high school curriculum. So it's really kind of high school, but it's, it's so it's really something that's supposed to be done. Right. And, mm -hmm. but they haven't really put given resources to it and haven't really had a mandate with what that means. Like what do you have to do to check that box? Right. So every school district looks at it a little bit differently and they may just do a little bit of this or that, whatever the case may be. Um, sure. But we've liked it. What we've done is, and I presented to a, a conference of superintendents up in Saratoga a few years back. And what we built is what, a very, very simple model. It's a very, very simple model. We take an emotional regulation and evidence-based instructional curriculum. It's called the DBT, DBT steps A. It just teaches emotional regulation and mindfulness. It's very, very simple. It's based on a therapy, but it was converted to a curriculum and steps A means for adolescents. A is a curriculum for adolescents. So we bring that directly into the classroom with a certified instructor who is educated 
normally a licensed clinical social worker who's gone through a, a certified certification program as well. And what they do is they go into the classroom 16 hours of the year. How many classes they have in health the year, I'm not really sure, but she gets 16 hours of that. And in those hours, we talk about mental health, emotional regulation, mindfulness, um, skills, uh, social skills, re uh, resiliency skills, and things like that. Uh, we had a, uh, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. In Pleasantville, they're in, we're in fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and ninth grade. So it's really pervasive. And they have a dedicated football game to us every year, the Brian Halloran Memorial football game. And we were setting up early last year, and there were a lot of young kids running around. And one of my other sons was carrying something. The other kid, one kid came up to him and said, break the hole. And he goes, that's so you don't hurt yourself, right? <laughs> it was very simple, but it's a good message. That's that's amazing. Again, you know, I, I grew up in India and I come from a background where if you have any kind of um, ADD, yeah, whatever dyslexia, it's like stop being lazy, work harder, right? So from, yeah. coming from that and hearing what you guys are doing today, it's it's truly amazing how far we've come. And, you know, it's right. Great. So I after um, so I'm Filipino Asian. So after Brian died, I know my culture when one of my cousins had died of AIDS, the whole family just sort of lied about it. They said that he died of cancer, but all the cousins knew that he was gay. So we all knew that he never had cancer, right. but all the adults like said that he died of cancer and it was like silent. Yeah, so it, when it, my no, go, go ahead, George. So when my son passed by suicide, I was so adamant and like angry because I just wanted to make sure that my mom did not lie about that to her family. She has like a very large family um, that I want them to know. I said, I'm going to be telling everyone he died by suicide and I'm proud of my son. He fought every day and you will not hide that fact because that's the problem in this, in our culture and in society, everybody's ashamed. So like he didn't get help, like he felt like different. Um, and yeah, so that was a, one of my big missions is that I, my, well, I was going to start with my family. We're not going to hide it. I'm going to be talking about him. I'm going to yeah. be talking about the way he died. So you either tell your, my nephew and nieces or it's going to come out at some point. And I just like to add one thing about the programming that we do is we make it simple for the districts because it's hard budget wise to come up with new things and whatnot. So we pay for the program for the first year or two. And then we ask if they can roll into their budget to do so. And that seems to have worked so far. It allows us to use our funds more wisely and effectively and allows us to spread to other districts more evenly or easily uh, financially. And um, speaking of Austin, we've had a couple of sit downs with Austin. Um, I think the superintendent is it Ray Sanchez, maybe. Um, anyway, there's a, I've spoken to the superintendent a couple of times. There's a, Austin's a big school district. There's a lot of layers there. So they have a lot of people in charge of counseling and different social right. and emotional learning aspects. And we just, mm -hmm. every time I've gone, we've gone through it a bit. Everybody wants to do it. And it just seems to have got bogged down in logistics. Almost sometimes as silly as not being able to arrange time for a meeting. Like I'm pretty busy, but I, I can usually find time for a quick meeting, you know, but anyway, so we would like to get involved with them. Um, and it would be, and we're, and they should know a little bit about us. We've had more conversations with them in the past. Awesome. Yeah, I, I would I definitely, uh, I, I have a few connections as well there. So I'll, I'll definitely would love to follow up on that and, and, and talk a, with, with them a little more and see if we can connect. Um, we, we are a tech podcast, so we, we are, we, we actually, this is the only probably tech portion of the, of the, this recording that we're going to throw out there, but obviously technology plays a big role in, in everybody's lives. Um, do you see any type of role where technology can can pl play be a major influence or have a major impact on improving you know mental health resources support and and services uh, out there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I know for I mean, there's it's a two double edged sword, right? For there are certain people that students might follow that might be negative to your mental health, and then right. there you know you you have positive influencers that students can follow. Um, so that's like sort of like the challenge that parents have to watch out for. But I know foundation wise for our foundation, it's definitely helped um, at least our students that follow us and also in getting like donations um, like Rainbow Sandals uh, discovered us. Uh, another clothing line locally discovered us. This band, they did fundraisers. So um, 
it's definitely helped us in that sense raise funds and then all the funds go directly back to the community towards the mental health education for the children as well as for the parents. So I, I feel like technology is definitely these days. I'd like if to you're running a foundation, critical. Sorry. Um, go ahead. As far as technology, I think the other thing on the counseling front is there are a few apps and a lot more apps out there now that mm -hmm. offer counseling that people can get immediate counseling right away, right? And mm -hmm. you know how effective is that sometimes when you're just speaking to different people? But a lot of times what I found with mental health, especially with like a suicide situation, is that people can suffer and they can work their way through it and they can fight their way to have a normal life. But when they're in a really down and out situation, they need something, right? They need somebody to kind of be there for them. And maybe these apps and things like this, if we can vet them a little bit better. No, my, my only concern is, you know, the due diligence on them and who's talking on the other end and, you know, that that, that type of thing. I, I don't know enough about them to um, verbally um, support one out there uh, at the moment, but I think that's coming. And I know through my employer, they offer one like that. And it seems like it's um, a fairly a good product. So that's definitely a way that technology is going to allow access to resources and to counseling um, much faster and probably a lot less expensive. Mm -hmm. Jolina, you mentioned something, you know, you said double-edged sword and it made me think, you know, <clears throat> I noticed you guys, you know, you, you have a fairly large social media following and social media can be a, a great thing. But like you said, with the, the whole influencer thing and the way kids are growing up now, it, it can be a blessing. It's yeah, it's terrifying because it, it can be mm -hmm. a blessing and a curse, right? With the way, uh, you know, social media can be. So using it in a, in that right way um, and, and using it as a positive angle. That Speaking of social media, that it, this just happened. Maybe my phone is listening to me. Maybe it's reading my emails. I'm sure it, it is. Definitely is. Um, but last night I was scrolling through Instagram on our account and something popped up about The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. And he's a, you know, a well-known actor, former wrestler, so on and so forth. And it was a fellow whole, bald guy. Also another oh. fellow <laughs> bald guy. Yeah, he used to have nice hair, but not, you know. But, and we all. Um, but he, the, what was mentioned was, um, I don't know how old he is now, 40s. When he was in college, he was, you know, going through some mental uh, health issues and didn't have anybody to reach out to, didn't know what to do. Um, mentioned a few different times things that he went through. Uh, I'm obviously summarizing it very quickly, but, um, and then I believe it was five, six years ago when he had children that he realized, um, I, he credits his, his kids for being able to actually seek out that help. Um, so I saw that message from him last night and he has, I don't know, probably has a hundred million followers. So like that message mm -hmm. was like one that, that like just immediately stuck with me. I was just laying in bed. It was like 11 o'clock at night. And I, you know, again, just mindlessly scrolling because, um, you know, couldn't sleep yet, but, um, and, and that popped up and again, uh, and I thought that was, that was like one of the, it was a perfect way to summarize like how social media can be a positive mm -hmm. influence yeah. and, get, and get the message out there. So many exactly. more athletes and, and, and actors and stuff. And I'm, believing, I'm not a big fan of that in some way being following them because like we shouldn't have all our political beliefs and our all our character based on what you know famous people say. But the fact that famous right. people can come out and say things about mental health and help erase the stigma and raise the awareness, it's huge. I mean, there's athletes out there and it's fine. Like it's it's like there's so much stigma though. Just think about it if you're in high school and you and you have a mental health problem, you you know, then you gotta go try to date a girl and her parents family knows they have a mental health problem. It's like, there's so many things they have to work through. And there's so many little, so much little garbage. So the kid that was garbage for us, but kids worry about it every day, you know? So the idea is we have to understand that we all probably have some, we're all kind of damaged goods. We all probably have some sort of uh, mental health challenges. It's just, have, they aren't exacerbated to the point where we need to take different steps and seek therapy and medication and other things like that. But anyway, what what is some advice um, that you would you would give someone you know to support their own mental health or to be able to support someone that they know is going through this? What what is some advice from your perspective that you can give our audience? Well, if it's a student, one is don't be embarrassed about it. Um, everybody struggles. Some people just hide it better than other people. But definitely reach out to a trusted person, whether it's your friend. Uh, or a coach or a teacher that you're connected with. Uh, and if you don't have any of those, um, there's always the, the hotline 
you know, pound 988, I mean, hashtag 988, if you really need that. And also just, I feel like you also have to social, there's a lot, like you have to socialize, you have to exercise um, and just like have good relationships. I think that's really helpful in maintaining a good mental health for any individual. Yeah. I would say just to add to that, use 988 before you really, really need it. And don't be afraid to use it. They're there to help and you're not wasting anybody's time. But Julian touched on a big point of it, especially like kids going away to college. Self-care is really important. It sounds really a little crazy, but you have to get sleep. You have to eat. You have to take care of yourself. You have to exercise. You have to get outside. You have to, you know, set yourself up for success, meaning don't put yourself in positions that trigger emotions that put you in a bad way. Put yourself in places that makes you feel more comfortable and where you can find success. And... Um, I don't know. I had some one other thing for you. I can't remember what the, Oh, and then seek, like Joanna said, seek out a trusted person. You got to trust someone. It's not a big deal. It's just like saying, I don't feel good today or saying I'm upset because I broke up with someone. It's the same thing. It's just a little more intense. And then when someone on the other end is on the receiving of this information, don't talk that much. Just listen, be empathetic, validate what they're saying. Tell them that must really suck. I'm sorry. You feel that way. Tell them I, I'm here for you. You know, I can help you get, I, I'll try to help you get through it the best I can. And then just stay with the program. Don't, you know, don't just drop them and not talk about it anymore. Like if you say something, you're going to bring it up and you're going to cause it. If you say something, it shows you care and it helps them be strong. Yeah. And also uh, statistics show, like, don't be afraid to ask a person if they feel suicidal or like straight out. Do you feel suicidal? Do you feel like taking your own life? Because statistics has shown that it doesn't increase the likelihood that the person will take their life. It actually increases the likely, likelihood that they won't and they'll actually get help. And that's one of the biggest lessons I learned. Like I never actually wanted to ask my son that straight out. And that's one of my biggest regrets because I could have saved his life you know, or someone could have, you know, it's not something like I always thought that that might put it in his head. But believe me, if, if somebody's that deep and, uh, you know, struggling with depression, they're already thinking about it. So it actually brings relief to them that you're asking them straight out. Yeah. Good there was this um, show, The Ripple, it was a movie, The Ripple Effect, and I forgot what the person's name is. It was pretty Hi. big in all the, what's his name? Kevin Hines. Oh, yeah, Kevin Hines. So Nami had a screening of that, and he said that uh, before he jumped off the bridge, the Cal uh, San, San Francisco Golden Bridge. Gate Bridge. He, yeah, sorry. He had told himself that if one person that walked by asked me, said hello, or acknowledged me, or asked me if I was okay, I wouldn't jump. Like they just want someone to ask them how they're doing, and so nobody did. Luckily, it ended, the story ended up well, and uh, he ended up living and you know completely. Um, he's like a speaker now for mental health. But yeah, so don't be scared to ask that because you'll actually help somebody. You can save their life. I, I have a question from the flip side. What, you know, as you mentioned, not everyone wants to talk about it. Not people don't feel comfortable talking about it. Are there any telltale signs that we could see if, you know, to get in front of it, ask the question or provide the help that they're seeking? Yeah, that's a good question. And I don't know if you want to go. That's a good, you can go, Joe, if you want. So you're, you're asking George if like they're, um, they seem suicidal, like what are the any signs? Of it. Uh, signs. Any, any of it. Signs of, signs of persons. Signs, yeah. Right. Signs, yeah. So like usually like if they start um, like giving things away or saying goodbye, like just like goodbye, like a solid goodbye, not like I'll see you tomorrow. Um, Cause I know, I think my son had, done that when he was with his group of friends. But these, these are, those are things for like actual suicide or like, I'm sorry to mean to stop jumping, but like for like yeah, that's people with mental, just men, kind of mental health, depression, things like that, that we're just kind of talking about, you know, mental struggles. It's really people change their, their, their habits. They don't keep themselves, mm -hmm. they don't keep themselves as clean and neat looking. They need to not shower as often. They don't maybe keep themselves up. They maybe isolate a little bit more. They maybe stop caring about things that they cared a lot about. Could be, um, you know, an extracurricular activity. Could be a class. Uh, they could just not start not caring about school when they're paying a lot of money and they're 
top student than they've been caring about school. So it's really like a change, a sudden change in behavior. And it could be almost any behavior, but sudden changes that don't make a lot of sense and is not within um, habitual character. And it's just kind of alarming. Those are type of things where you could just say, look, I know you've been, you know, it seemed like you're down a bit. You know, I want to see, no, I'm always here to talk to you about it if you want. And, you know, anything going on, can we, you know, what's, can we, can we talk or whatever? And, and I'm sure you'll get something. Yeah. And so with that being said, I wanted to obviously, um, I wanted to pl give a, a shout to your, to your website so that people can, can get more information from, from there. Uh, make sure I get it right. BTH break the whole dot org. Yep. And we, you know, we, what we wanted to do, uh, uh, as we kind of start wrapping up is really talk about the, uh, the event on June 11th, which is the, the fifth annual walk. So we wanted to kind of hand it over to you guys just to, to be able to talk about that event a little more and, and give our listeners some, some more info about that. Go, Joel, or me? Uh, well, I can just start it off. Like I was just thinking about that. It's our fifth walk. So we actually, the first walk we did just six months after our son, Brian passed away. And, you know, we were, when you lose a child or lose anyone, you're pretty much in a fog. So I just can't believe that we were able to do that within six months. Um, but I have to give a shout out to the community and our friends who helped uh, and the you know, our board that help us put, put the walk together. So it is on June 11th at 4 a.m. Brian? So yeah, our friends and community, awesome. School district, awesome. Um, so it's called Into the Light Walk. We start our walks at 4.30 in the morning when it's dark out. We light these Japanese candles. We go up in the air. We light 19 because my son was 19 when he passed away. And they're very, very... It's very dramatic. It's dark out. Uh, it walk, you walk about maybe a two mile track and not a track, but it'll go up through Pleasantville, end up back at the high school. We have a couple of speakers, generally people that have um, personal experiences in this area and have challenges. I probably say a few words and um, we have a little get together and everybody hangs out and then we depart. This year is our fifth year. Last year, our theme was Don't Stop Believing, as my shirt says, and it's hashtag Break the Hold. This year, our theme is Five Years of Hope, because it's our fifth year, and we're really hoping to expand programming going forward to impact more kids. We've impacted, we started impacting 100 kids. We impact now 1,300 kids a year with our mental That's health programming awesome. in schools. The, the walk is June 11th, Sunday morning, 4.30 a.m. at Pleasantville High School. 4.30 a.m., June 11th, Pleasantville High School, Into the Light Walk. You can visit us on bthbreakthehold.org. And for our local listeners, if you're, if, if you're listening, when you have to hear this, please make sure you get out there and uh, let's support this very, very excellent cause. We have like, we have like six, 600 people or so coming probably, so it'll be big. We want more people to come. Let's raise the volume and let's raise the awareness. Thank you for the time. As long as it's not running, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, and as, as I mentioned to you guys offline before, I, 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 as long as my doctor clears me by then, I, I, George and I both plan to be there to, to support the cause. Awesome. You, you, can you, come and, you can come and not walk, too, if you don't want to. Oh, okay. Fair. I'll, let, I'll make George do all the walking. I gotcha. <laughs> Just put Just put pre pre injury, there. Rich was a big 5K runner. Now he's... Uh, ah, yeah. that's yeah, frustrating. Yeah. That's frustrating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. But th with that being said, uh, we really just wanted to, to thank you guys for, for coming on today, uh, sharing this story, uh, sharing what you're doing, which is amazing. Uh, hopefully we can you know, help get the word out there. Uh, hopefully I can, George and I can use some of our connections maybe to get into some of the other you know, local school districts uh, and expand this. You know, obviously as parents of young kids as well, we're, we're both very interested in helping you know, in any way, shape or form that we can. Um, so again, thank you guys both so much for joining. Um, before we actually go, usually what we do is the day we record, we give a, a, a shout out to the day it is. Specific day like it's is. like national, you know, like some days it's like national chocolate day or national, um, what was it? National uh, hug, a, hug, a, hug a koala day. or hug a, a hug horse a, a couple weeks ago. But uh, today there was a couple today. The uh, first one is very fitting. The, the, the first one was very fitting. You want to, I'll let you do it. Yeah. The, today, May 18th is a send an electronic greeting card day. Yeah. So, so I thought that was a kind of a fitting way to, to, to close up. Uh, so, I, you know, that was a, that was a good one. It kind of uh, goes yeah. with the, the theme. It's, you know, 
Hey, if, if you have it, and it, it goes with our, our, our closing uh, statement as well, where we always say to, to check in on an old friend. We have a little yeah. corny sign yeah. off line. Yeah. It's not corny. It's, it's, it's become a thing. We, we found it, we saw it somewhere online and we kind of made it our own, but yeah. uh, we'll, and we'll, 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 we'll say that in a minute, but the electronic greeting card thing, I think was a really cool way to, to kind of tie it up in the, sure. in, in this, but we, we really wanted to just thank you both uh, for joining us. Um, and, and uh, we look forward to, to, to talking with you guys again soon. Yeah, thanks. thank You're you so welcome. much. Thank you for having us, guys. <laughs> this yeah. is amazing. This is really amazing. Yes. Oh, you're doing I myself amazing. have learned quite a bit today, to yeah. be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Glad George to talk in the future. Yeah. We look forward to seeing you guys again. Excellent. Yes, absolutely. So with, we'll, with that we'll being said, our... should we uh, should we should we do our usual yeah. sign off? Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll do our usual sign off. All uh, right, folks. Thank you for joining us today. And as as always, be kind. Stay steady. Check in on an old friend. And have a have good, a good cup, of cup of Joe for us. Take care. Take care. As Sweet Lou would say. <laughs> there you go. Love it. So, awesome. Uh, you got to stop it.